very excited because I have just hit 60,000 subscribers here on my YouTube channel. That is bonkers to me. I am just thrilled to bits. Thank you all so much for watching my videos. It makes my heart so happy to know that so many of you have been enjoying my demonstrations and I am always hoping that you guys will find inspiration and maybe take some gems and some little tips and tricks out of my videos that you can use at home with your Stampin' Up! products or your non-Stampin' Up! products. My goal is just to get you using your craft stash, using your stamps and products and taking time to have some fun and create. I want to do a little giveaway to show my appreciation to you all. I did this when I hit 50,000 subscribers, so I really wanted to do it again. I am going to give away a little package that's going to have some fun um, products produced right here in Nova Scotia, Canada, as well as some Stampin' Up! gifts. So this is going to be for anybody, uh, no matter where you live in the world, I will pick a name out of the comments and I will send you this gift and I will make that announcement next week. So all I am asking you to do is A, if you haven't already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and B, leave a comment down below and let me know where you live, where you're from and C, if you want to tell me a little bit about yourself or what kind of um, crafting or stamping techniques you love, any little tidbit you want to share, I love reading that and getting to know you. I have such a beautiful YouTube family, YouTube community, and I'm so blessed because you are all just so positive and warm and wonderful, and I've made so many friendships with many of you. So thank you again for watching my, my channel and for hitting that subscribe button. It really, really means the world to me. So having said all of that, I want to share another fun stamping technique with you today. So I can't wait to share it with you. Let's start stamping. The first couple of cards that I'm going to demonstrate for you are going to feature uh, two Stampin' Up! stamp sets. They're both from Celebration right now, so available until the end of February 2023 or while supplies last. This one is called In the Country, and then this is an exclusive host-only um, Celebration stamp set called Scenic Garden. And um, aside from the fact that these are exclusive and I wanted to share these while these are still available with you, um, they're both detailed stamps. So different type of designs, but they're both detailed, right? So I thought that the, these would be great examples to start with. So I'm going to start with the Scenic Garden. All right, so I'm bringing in my Stamparatus and a piece of grid paper. And my cardstock is our basic white, and this is cut down four by five and a quarter. So I'm just going to position this right about here and put my stamp down. And I am stamping using my, um, I need stays on for this one, I think. Okay, and now I'm bringing in this second image and I'm going to slide this over. It's this image here I'm using. I want to use some of that foliage that's on here. So I'm just going to put that there. And then I'm going to slide this over here I'm using the same Im image. I'm just going to pop that down right there. Now I'm bringing in the hollyhocks, which are one of my very favorite flowers in the garden. I last year um, 
I planted, well, first of all, hollyhocks I found hard to find, actually, um, for some reason. So when I did find them, I think I ended up buying like 40 some odd plants. Um, for our wedding last year, I really wanted the yard full of hollyhocks. Um, and not one of them bloomed. So obviously, because they are biannuals, <laughs> I did not know at the time when I bought them that they weren't going to bloom. Um, so this year is going to be pretty spectacular. Now I did have some hollyhocks already planted the year before. So those were blooming in time for our wedding last August and they were beautiful. But this year, yeah, there's going to be a lot of hollyhocks in our yard and I'm super excited to see those bloom this year. And I'm, my paper moved and so that's gone blurry and I'm not starting over. I'm leaving it just the way it is. And my little path, such a pretty little stamp set. So let's put the pathway right here, coming up to the bench. Whoops, let's get that magnet on there so it doesn't keep moving around on me. So much fun to create scenes with our stamps and it's a great way to get extra mileage out of our stamps instead of just using the one single stamp which of course you can and I have and it's beautiful but it's really fun to incorporate all the different images into our cards now I want some birds in the background so I'm using this image from beside me and I think I can just stamp that I don't think I need to use the stamparatus so I'm going to ink that with my black stays on and I'm going to put that right about there, like that. There are a few different ways you can do this technique and I'm going to share a few of them today. So the first one is I'm taking a circle die, so you can use any size circle die, it does not want to stay in my hand, um, and find a spot that you want your spotlight to be. Um, I'm thinking here because I want to get a bit of the bench and the flowers. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to stick with that right there. And I'm going to pull in my watercolor pencils and I'm going to start by outlining my circle with my black watercolor pencil. Now you can go on the outside or the inside of your circle die. I'm going to do the inside. So I'll just draw my circle like so. And now I'm going to take my watercolor pencils and I'm just going to color inside this line. And I can see I got a little bit of a bump there. All right. So I'm going to start with my uh, Bermuda Bay and I'm going to use that for the sky. So I'm just adding a light layer of color because I'm going to go back in with my blender pen to blend all of this in. Okay. And then I'm going to take my Daffodil Delight. So I'm going to add some yellow to this bench. And then I'm going to go over top of this with the brown. So let's use this. What is this? This is Cajun Cray. So it's not really brown, but it's the color that I want. And flower time. Let's have some pops of red. This is cherry cobbler. So we'll do some red hollyhocks here. And let's do some purple hollyhocks over here. I think I got them all for the most part. 
And now we need some green. So I'm going to start with uh, Granny Apple Green. I think this is. Yes, it is. So I'm just kind of going up on the stems. And again, this is all going to get worked in with the blender pen. So this is just going to brighten it up nicely. And uh, let's pull in, let's see, garden green. And I'm going to add some garden green on the leaves. And if I need to, I can go back in and add some more color after I've used my blender pen. But we're just going to start with this for now. And old olive to kind of go down below where we would be having some grass. So we're going to pretend there's some grass down here. And look, I forgot about this side right there. So let's go back in with the granny apple green. I'm going to start working on my sky first. Make sure my blender pen is clean, which it is. And I'm just trying to stay away from that initial black line that I made for now because I don't want to pull in that black watercolor pencil into my blue. I'm going to turn my paper this way. Just work that in. Hold in a little bit of ink here and there. That's all right. I have pulled in some of the red. So we're actually just going to go in and get that red going and it's kind of going outside of the lines a bit. That's all right. That's a that's a really fun look when you get it kind of blurry like that. It's more of a watercolory look, right? Now I'm going into my purple flowers. Okay, and now I'm going to Pull the greens together. Okay, and I'm just going to do that old olive down here. Get in. Now we're going to do this. Blend it all in. It's just magic how it all blends in together. I love it. Now I'm going to go around that black pencil line and kind of shade it out. So I'm just working in tiny little strokes as I move around the circle. And you can see how that's kind of added the illusion of another layer of cardstock behind it, which of course there isn't. And what I'm going to do now actually is take my Daffodil Delight um, pencil crayon and just go on the inside of this circle. Okay, so I have just adhered that stamp layer to a gorgeous grape um, card base. So I want to use gorgeous grape for my sentiment. So I'm just going to cut a three quarters of an inch strip. And I want to emboss my sentiment with white. So I'm going to take my embossing buddy, tap that down. And I'm bringing in the Celebration Sending Support, and I'm going to stamp Sending Loving Thoughts and Prayers. I'm going to stamp this with my white craft pad. And I'm going to cut a strip off my dimensionals. So 
there is the first card done, super simple, using the watercolor pencil crayons. So now I'm going to show you the same thing using stamp and blend markers. Alright, so I am inking this with my memento now because I'm going to color this card with the stamp and blend markers. So I'm going to slide this over here because I want to continue on using this stamp. So I'm going to put that down there. For this card, I'm going to use a rectangle die. So these are my stitched rectangles. And of course, the smaller the die, the smaller amount of the area you need to color on your card. I think I'm going to use that one right there. This is a little bit bigger, but the reason being is I want to get some sky in there. I want to get some of those stones colored, a bit of my little gate. So I'm going to go ahead Right, so this time I'm just going to take my pencil and I'm going to go on the inside again. And I will erase that pencil afterwards. So, all right, I am going to start by coloring in the sky and I'm going to use my light pool party. So I'm going to go right around the outline. I want this to be grass down here. I'm going to make a little grassy hill. So I'm going to leave that as it is. A little bit in here. My green is going to be darker than my blue, so I'm not worried if I get a little bit of blue. Um, into some of these line images because my green's going to hide that. So I'm just going to, um, I'm going to go down like so, so that I'm going to make a little green hill for my grass. Now I'm bringing in my light old olive and I'm going to start doing my grass. right over that because I'm going to go on top with a darker green and it's just easier. So for the bricks in this little garden pathway I'm going to use the SU 400 and I'm just going to go right down the line and just color in my bricks. And for my gate, I'm using my light so saffron for the first color. Next, I'm going on with my light crumb cake. I think I'm going to use the fine tip here. I'm taking my light smoky slate just for this little corner bit right here, which is the stone. And I'm trying to make sure that my lines are straight. So I'm going to take the fine portion of my old olive and just go right across. Now I'm coming in with my dark granny apple and I'm going to fill in the leaves and do the stems. With my light old olive 
and fill in this little spot right here that I missed. Go around these little bits. I'm gonna do some of the hollyhocks with the light sweet sorbet and the dark cherry cobbler. So I'm gonna start with the light sweet sorbet and just go in here and that's such a pretty color. Now I'm gonna take my fine tip of my cherry cobbler and go right in the center of the hollyhocks. these flowers I'm going to use my light Highland Heather and my light Rich Razzleberry. So I'm going to start with the lightest of the two. I'm bringing in my light Daffodil Delight for these ones. Just a couple little yellow flowers there. And now I'm bringing in my dark So Saffron just to go in the center a little bit. It's very subtle, but it's there, and I'm going to put a little bit on this butterfly. I've decided I want my leaves to pop just a little bit more off the page, so I'm bringing in my dark um, old olive now. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that to the leaves. And I'm just taking my eraser and I'm going to erase the pencil line. In that same sending support stamp set that I used on the first card I'm going to stamp here for you always and I just have a scrap piece of basic white and I'm going to stamp that with my black memento cut a tiny strip of my dimensionals So I'm going to put this right on the spotlight area. Now I actually want to move that over a little bit. So I'm going to show you a little trick. If I peel that off, I'm probably going to make a mess of things. So I'm taking that same paper and I'm just going back and forth underneath. And that will just lift it right off. Nice, clean, and simple. is my quick one layer spotlighting card. Okay, so there are the first two examples of how you can do spotlighting without adding additional cardstock. Of course, I did for the sentiments, but you don't even have to do that. You can stamp the sentiment up here, but I do like adding those little elements. And I think they look really pretty. And of course, I could have done the outline around here just like I did on this one, but I wanted to show you the difference. And I really like this without that distinct line, but this does give the illusion that there's another piece on top. And I made a lot of cards like this over the weekend. So here I have stamped the, uh, this image is from In the Country. So this is from this set right here. So what I did is using that same circle die that I used on the first card, I cut a piece of window sheet, this measures three by four, and I cut the center out with my circle die. So I'm gonna set these aside because these are gonna be used as my masks. So I'll put them somewhere safe so I can use them again. And I am going to use this as a mask on here. So I'm going to bring in a blending brush and my balmy blue. And I think I'm gonna bring in some washi tape just to hold this down. Pick up some ink and I'm just gonna go right on the side here. On the top. Now I'm bringing in my so saffron and I'm just gonna go over here with that. I'm 
bringing in my crumb cake. Going on the building. A little bit of Cajun craze. And I know I've gone past the building here a little bit. And that's okay. You know me. I don't stress about things like that. Nothing has to be perfect. Don't you think perfection is overrated? I do. So this little bit here. Bringing in my Daffodil Delight. I've decided I'm going to add some yellow over here just to make it look like there's some sunlight over there. I'm just going to add some green to these flower pots and just add a few little bits of color here and there. I do like using my granny apple green because it's such a nice bright color so we're going to tap some of that down. My sweet sorbet marker. Some pops of red here and there. Okay, and I'm going to bring in my soft suede to color in the plant pots. And my Sahara sand just to kind of add some color to these shaded areas and also the steps. I'm going to go in with my crumb cake marker just to add a little bit of coloring here. All right, so let's take this off and look at that. Looks so pretty, but you can see I got a little bit of ink here, which I didn't mean to do, so I'm gonna trim that down. Piece of basic white cardstock. Um, 11 by four and a quarter scored at the five and a half mark. That's going to be my card base. And I want to put some linen thread down here. So let me grab my tear and tape. So for my sentiment, I'm bringing in my Happy Labels bundle. I know I've been showing this a lot, but I'm using it a lot. I really, really love the sentiments and I love the punch. So I'm going to use the um, You Are My Happy Place for this card. All right, so I have a scrap piece of crumb cake. And I'm going to punch it. I'm using the little border edge. So I'm just going to push that all the way through. Punch. Do the same thing over here. Looks super cool. And pop that onto my card with some more dimensionals. made um, a double bow with my linen thread so I'm gonna pop that on um, let's see I think right about there put that on with some glue dots and there's my completed card All right, one more card, and this is really hard for me to stop because I'm, I'm seriously having so much fun making these cards, and there are so many variations of using this faux spotlighting technique. Um, so we're gonna use this image next. I'm gonna stamp this with my stays on. show you how you can use a punch now so this is our postage stamp punch and another three by four piece of um, window sheet so I'm just putting this right in punching it out so I will put these pieces away and then I can use them time and time again Okay, I'm going to take a piece of washi tape and I'm just centering this. So again, this window sheet is 3 by 4 
And my basic white is five and a quarter by four. And balmy blue again, I love balmy blue. And I'm just gonna go around the edge. So really this is also a form of masking, isn't it? But um, the spotlight portion um, is definitely going to be evident on this card because we're not coloring in that whole stamped image, okay? So now I'm gonna take off this piece of washi tape, holding my, my window sheet in place. I'm now just gonna position it right here, taking the same ink, I'm gonna go right in the middle bringing my old all again. I'm using the same blending brush because I don't mind that um, green mixing in with the blue. So I'm just going to go down this hillside where the grass is. Bringing in my shaded spruce now and my smaller blending brush because I just want to add a little bit of the darker green on those trees up here. So I'm just going to go this way. Just lightly go down on top of those trees. Add a little variation of green. I'm going to go back in with my old olive because I did get a little bit too much of that green there. So let's, let's go back in with the old olive on top before that shaded uh, spruces here. Here we go. Let's just blend that right in. I really like that. I'm going to add a little bit more old olive down here because I really like how that just went a little bit darker up there. There we go. I think I am going to bring in a marker. I'm going to bring in my crumb cake and just go over the fence post. Look at that. How cool and so fast. All this needs is a sentiment and it's done and it's one layer. Isn't that cool? I love that. This is another beautiful new stamp set and I'm going to use the sentiment difficult roads bring you to beautiful destinations which I think is a perfect stamp um, sentiment for this um, image. Goodness, I'm so happy with this card. All right, let's get this on our card base. So I'm not putting on any ribbon or anything. This actually would have been really pretty popped up on dimensionals, but I'm just gonna keep it nice and flat. I feel like I'm really just scratching the surface with today's cards because the spotlighting technique is just such a great technique. It always has been. But the fact that we're not having to cut out extra card pieces, I mean, once you have, you know, your little masks, you've always got them. And it's just fast and pretty. And it's a great way to um, add a, a, you know, add just a splash of color to your detailed images. And it's just, it's beautiful. You can use this with, you can use stencils inside your um, spotlighting. You can do all kinds. You can emboss inside your spotlighting. Um, of course, you can see I use watercolor pencil crayons. I use my Stampin' Blends. I use my ink pads. Um, there's just, there's so much you can do. And I, I really hope that you give this faux spotlighting technique a try. It's beautiful with just the one layer. Super, super fun. And uh, I can't wait to make more of these cards. So thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and the little bell next to it. You'll be notified every time I upload a new uh, video. And I really, really hope you have some fun stamping today using these techniques. Thanks, friends. I appreciate you so much. Take care and happy stamping.